Welcome to CourtLogic's monthly housing market update for August 2016. Earlier this month, we saw the Reserve Bank cut interest rates for the second time this year, taking the cash rate down to a historic low of 1.5%. The rates decision came a day after CoreLogic reported a slowdown in the rate of growth across the housing market, with dwelling values rising 0.8% over the month across the Hedonic Home Value Index. While dwelling values are still rising, importantly, the annual pace of growth was the lowest since September 2013, highlighting that housing market conditions appear to be softer than previously thought. The monthly headline result masks the diversity that's evident across the Australian housing market. Dwelling values moved higher in July across only four of Australia's eight capital cities, and they fell across the remaining four cities. Perth and Darwin continue the downwards trend that's been evident since 2014, while Brisbane and Canberra values also dipped lower in July. Darwin and Perth remain as the only capital cities where dwelling values have shifted lower over the past year. At the other end of the spectrum, Sydney values are up by 9.1% over the past 12 months, and Melbourne values have risen by 7.5%. While the annual growth trend in dwelling values remains high in Sydney and Melbourne, the trend is tracking at about half the annual rate of growth compared with the recent peak rate of growth recorded last year. Several other indicators are also suggesting the housing growth cycle may be losing some steam. The number of dwelling sales has been trending lower during 2016, with the number of home sales across the capital cities showing a 13% year-on-year decline. Of the major capital cities, the Sydney housing market is showing the most substantial year-on-year -year fall in home sales, with transactions over the past 12 months falling by 19.5% compared with the same time a year ago. Dwellings are starting to take longer to sell, with a typical capital city home averaging 47 days to sell compared with 42 days at the same time last year. Outside of the Christmas and New Year period, this represents the longest average selling time since August 2013. Homes are taking longer to sell than they did a year ago in every capital city except Adelaide and Melbourne. If the average selling time continues to trend higher, we would expect discounting rates to also rise, which is likely to help easing some of the upwards pressure on dwelling values. Another indicator of slowing activity can be seen across the CoreLogic valuation platforms. The CoreLogic Mortgage Index, which tracks mortgage activity across proprietary platforms, was 8.6% lower in July and 3% lower year on year. This indicates that demand for mortgages eased in July following a fall in June. Auction markets have bucked the slowing trend, with auction clearance rates gaining some ground during July. In Sydney, auction clearance rates have been above 70% for 15 consecutive weeks now, reaching a preliminary clearance rate of 80% over the last week of July, while in Melbourne, clearance rates have been above 70% for each of the past four weeks. Keeping in mind that auction volumes are currently much lower than they were 12 months ago. The Melbourne housing market has slipped back into second place based on the annual rate of growth now tracking just below Sydney's at 7.5% per annum. The trend between houses and units is substantially different though, with house values rising at more than double the pace of unit values. Over the past year, Melbourne house values have risen by 8% compared with the 3.2% lift in unit values. The slower rate of growth in unit markets can probably be traced back to higher supply levels and deteriorating confidence about the prospect of capital gains across the Melbourne unit sector. In reality, the unit markets that show the highest risk profile tend to be both existing and new projects located in the supply epicentres of the Melbourne CBD as well as some of the CBD fringing suburbs such as Docklands and Southbank. While the rate of value growth has slowed over recent months, the two largest and most expensive capital cities, Sydney and Melbourne, have continued to record relatively rapid rates of value growth. With investment in the marketplace still a large source of mortgage demand, it will be important to monitor investment appetite for housing over the coming months. Investors still comprise 47% of the value of housing finance commitments, excluding refinance loans. Over a year ago, APRA advised Australian lenders that they couldn't grow their investment portfolios by more than 10% per annum. The most recent housing credit data has shown that investor housing credit has increased by just 5% over the past year, its slowest rate of growth since March 2012. Tighter serviceability limits and a recent crackdown on lending to investors from offshore has resulted in a fall in demand from the investor segment of the market. The data indicates that there is scope for lenders to increase their lending to investors. However, it remains to be seen as to whether there will be any significant uplift in demand from this segment of the market. Investors may progressively look outside of the two major capital cities, but they'll likely to be cautious about the potential for oversupply in the apartment market, as well as low yields due to soft rental conditions. 
With interest rates coming down in August, policymakers and regulators will be keeping a close eye on the housing market. In a statement from the Reserve Bank following the rates decision, Reserve Bank Governor Glenn Stevens indicated that the likelihood of lower interest rates exacerbating risk in the housing market had diminished. There is already an indication that the cash rate cut won't be passed on in its entirety to mortgage rates, which will help to minimise the chances of a rebound in home value appreciation. Additionally, pre-existing affordability barriers, high supply levels, low rental yields and a more cautious lending environment are likely to dampen the trend rate of capital gains further. As always, thanks for tuning into the CoreLogic overview of housing market conditions. There's always plenty more research and housing market insights at our website located at www.corelogic.com.au.